today I have the distinct pleasure of speaking with both the chairman, CEO, and president of Appia, Rare Earths and Uranium, Tom Drivis and Frederick Kozak. How are you both today? Great, Tracy. Really good. Thank you, Tracy, for having us again. So on that note, you've had a number of announcements since the new year. If you don't mind, let's provide our audience with an update, starting with an update on the geopolitical factors that may be raising interest in Appia, both rare earths and uranium, which are critical materials. Tom, I'm gonna to start with you there. Can you tell us why people might be more interested in Appia at this time? Tracy, it's a very good question. As you know, uh, the world is having problems, issues with energy uh, uh, right now. And uh, you know, there's a shortage of oil and gas. Uh, there is a shortage of gas in Europe. And um, uh, the world is, is looking to go into uh, uh, electrification of, of vehicles, uh, green energy, and Apia is part of the solution. They need, uh, they need rare earths for the, uh, for the uh, vehicles, for electric vehicles, and, and Apia is, is, uh, is exploring for that. And Frederick, can, um, our president here, can expand a little bit on that. Well, yeah, thank you, Tom. I mean, one thing to note here, Tracy, is that the geopolitical environment, notwithstanding the tragic events ongoing in Europe right now and Ukraine, um, really hasn't changed in that China still controls about 90% of the rare earth uh, industry, for lack of a better word. And a, a very important point is that Today, right now, the world can only supply enough rare earth elements uh, to permanent magnets, et cetera, to meet current demand. So when we're looking at uh, increasing electric vehicle uh, sales and usage by as much as five times talk, uh, talking to the experts by 2030, there is a huge gap in the, in the market for rare earths. So, Frederick, I don't know if you want to just give us kind of an update on the uranium supply of Appia. Well, sure, Tracy. Thanks. Um, so we've uh, actually acquired a new uranium property in northern Saskatchewan in the Athabasca Basin. We call it Other Side. Uh, it's a property or part of a property that we owned before. And if you look at the price of uranium right now, approaching $60, I think, a pound, um, it points to a, a, a geopolitical situation that, uh, you know, Russia being a supplier. We are more optimistic, obviously, about the potential for uranium in the, in the world. And then, Tom, maybe you can talk a little bit about our uranium properties. Apia has um, three uh, uh, uranium properties in, in uh, northern Saskatchewan around the Athabasca Basin. These are our... Um, model for uh, for those properties uh, the the uh, what we're looking for there is uh, near surface high grade near infrastructure uranium uh, as frederick mentioned we did acquire one uh, uh, another one that is basically towards the, the center of the basin and, and this is it has a lot of similarities to all to a lot of uh, um, uh, uh, huge deposits in in in, in the Athabasca basin that's more like a deeper um, uh, 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 target for, for uranium. But in addition to that, Apia has the uh, property in Elio Lake, Ontario, which is we have a huge resource of uranium and, and rare earths. And, and basically that's uh, the resources there. We, we got over 50, 55 million pounds of uranium in, 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 in supply in, in uh, 43 on the one resource and 180, about 180 million pounds of uh, rare earths. And, and that with the, the demand uh, and the uh, in, in increasing in uranium, the prices are going up and, and, and that could put Romeo uh, Apia basically into the, um, into the uh, uh, ura uranium picture, you know, down the road uh, uh, for uh, supplying uranium or or or, uh, uh, or or securing being a secure source of uranium in a secure place like Canada, uh, Ontario. Well, 
Speaking to that, can you comment uh, earlier in the new year, you made an announcement that you just uh, 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 acquired a new claim block in the Athabasca Basin for a large prospective uranium mineral uh, project. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? The, the other side property is a, is a large property in, in um, as I mentioned, in the center of, of the, um, uh, the north, uh, northern part of the Athabasca Basin. And um, it has a lot of similarities. Uh, like we had this property before uh, a few years ago and, and we dropped it because uh, the demand for uranium wasn't there. We, we, a lot of uh, companies like uh, uh, before us had done a lot of geophysics, a lot of work on this, on this property. And, um, and there is good indications that, that this could host a large uh, um, uh, uranium deposit uh, in, uh, uh, but it, that property, you know, the, the target is, is deeper. So we're gonna be looking at that. But in addition to that, uh, Apia was, um, um, uh, preparing to drill our Loringer property that we drilled to ice, uh, and and but unfortunately we were delayed with a permit, and and we were they, we needed an ice road, and we decided to um, uh, not sort of postpone that drilling to uh, uh, for later on, and 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 move uh, our um, efforts to um, our drilling uh, uh, start our drilling. In Alsus Lake, that's the uh, the um, uh, um, the rare earth uh, project. So uh, uh, I don't know if you saw the last uh, news release, uh, uh, but we definitely announced mobilizing our our uh, geologists, and 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 if everything works well, by Monday we'll have uh, uh, the first drilling group uh, there uh, uh, at Alsus Lake, and we're going to kickstart this uh, this exploration program, this drilling program earlier this year, because last year we did build a year round um, uh, camp and, and, and we got two drills on site uh, and, and we're sort of, we're gonna start in March rather than in June, like we started in uh, July last year. So we're gonna have a very extensive uh, drilling program and, uh, and we're, we're excited, very excited. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that. Alice's Lake, Frederick Kozak, could you please comment about your two most recent news releases and provide an update. And also could you just back up just a few uh, steps here and explain to investor intel audience that may not appreciate how competitive your rare earth project is, why it's competitive, why it's compelling, and also what you're planning on doing, just further to what Tom Drive has just commented on. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. Well, listen, uh, the, the thing about Alsace Lake, and we have talked about this, and it's in our corporate presentation on our website, is Alsace Lake so far looks to be one of the best rare earth discoveries in the world. We've, uh, we've got on average 16.5% rare earth total rare earth oxide within the monazite. And monazite, for those of the, your viewers who know or don't know, is a much better host of, of the critical rare earth elements than are the other sources of rare earths in the world. So in that, we've been doing a lot of testing with, uh, <clears throat> with the Saskatchewan Research Council. And we had a, uh, one of our news releases came out in, uh, in February that announced that our initial metallurgical tests on the rare earth uh, sample that we had sent to the SRC basically comes out and shows that the preliminary bench scale testing results are comparable to other rare earth projects, projects that are producing in the world. So it supports the potential for the Alsace Lake project as a, as a uh, possible rare earth supply from monazite. Um, so with that, we're uh, very excited about getting our, uh, we're, still, uh, we're still missing some assay results. We're very excited about getting those. We've got an indication that we should have them before the end of March. And with that, we will be able to, uh, we will be able to talk more about uh, our drilling from last year. So um, looking at this year though, as Tom has mentioned, we are on the ground in Alsace Lake. We're just, uh, it's 20 below up there right now. We're just getting the camp up and open and operating. Uh, but 
Tom highlighted that we've got drillers coming in. We're going to start drilling uh, as early as Monday. And we've got at least 12,000 meters of diamond drill core planned for this year. <clears throat> a lot of that drilling will again focus on the WRCB area, which is our main, uh, main discovery. But as uh, some of your viewers will know that last year we found what we call the Western anomaly, which looks to be massive in terms of uh, high grade mineralization. We've got 27 square kilometers on surface. So we've got a lot of work to do. And with a winterized camp, we talk about 12,000 plus meters of drilling for this year, but it could be significantly more than that. Well, I'd like to thank you both for your update on Appia rare earths and uranium. And uh, I hope you two will join us more often. Thank you both. Thank you, thank Tracy. You, Tracy.